I'm going to say Happy New Year, even though it's the last day of January, because we haven't actually uh, spoken on air during that time. Jamie Wall, always uh, great to have you back, the true independent voice of New Zealand sports journalism. Happy New Year, bro. Thank you, Martin. It's great to be talking with you in, uh, in the new year. I uh, hope you've been well. Yeah, really good. And look, this was always going to happen. We should be prepared for it. And you certainly are more than most because you did a lot of work last year with New Zealand Rugby on this. And knowing that, I was fascinated to see Mark Robinson's immediate response, which was exactly what I expected and expected him to say. And it was a great thing to say too. A gay all black. Again, no great surprise or is it to you? Well, I don't think it's a surprise because we've whenever this uh, issue comes up, and it has for as long as I can remember. I mean, I'm sure it has for you as well, yeah, being yeah. working in talkback radio. Is that there? Ha- there statistically has to have been gay or blacks, and and Campbell's just simply the first one who's who's come out publicly and said it. And it was one of the things that was very interesting uh, in the story uh, last night, which which I think. Uh, is, would not come as much of a surprise to people who, who have been playing rugby, not exactly at a high level, but any level really, uh, like I have for the last sort of 30 years, is that um, it was well known to his teammates uh, that he was gay, or, or team, he told people on his team. And that is very much the the way that it is when you're in a rugby team, is that you're in as a rugby player. And that's first and foremost. And whatever else you are sort of comes comes secondary. And if you want to, if you have other things going on in your life, you once you've sort of formed that relationship with your teammates over over seasons, then that sort of stuff comes out. And and that could be anything, um, not just sexuality wise. Uh, you know, it could be could be family stuff. It could be you know could be political stuff. It could be anything. Um, and Generally, that stuff, like most of the things in a rugby team, is kept uh, kept in, in inside the, the community, especially uh, in the All Blacks, which is, as you and I both know very well, is a very closed off um, community, very guarded. Uh, we don't really like talking about anything. No. Um, and and that I think is the re- one of the main reasons uh, why it's taken this long for someone to express something as outside of the norm when it comes to talking about i guess what you'd say like the heteronormative uh, uh you know situation you have in rugby uh is simply not only because of um societal norms that were baked into that sport many years ago uh that reflected the values of those times um but just simply because of the values of a sport that you are an individual uh, you're not an individual you're a team member and to put yourself uh, sort of out there as as someone that uh, is, is seeking the limelight for anything other than being an all-black is, is something that's frowned upon. I was trying to give a head around this because my initial response, mate, and I yeah, I don't want this to be taken the wrong way, but I know that, you know, people are free to take it however they do want it. Is my initial response is I don't care. I really just, I just don't care. And I, I don't mean that, Jamie, in a mean way. It's just that I really just don't care. I mean, you know, it's like I, I, I've never thought, and unless, unless of course, you know, it's 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 uh, somebody of non-consensual age or something like that. Whoever you sleep with, as long as you're consenting, and as long as it's, you're happy on both sides, whatever. However, I do acknowledge that this will be news, and I understand why the mass media take a stick to it, and I understand why they go to every gay politician in the place and get rent a quote Grant Robertson and every bloody else commenting on it, because it is clickbait headlines and it's front page news and all of that. But ultimately. To me, Campbell Johnston, I, I couldn't remember Campbell Johnston being a All Black. I'm not being insulting by that, but I do remember him being a Crusader, and he was a damn good servant for Canterbury and, and Crusader Rugby. I bet that's how he'd prefer to be remembered. Obviously, he knows the consequence of what he's just done, and he knows that, that now he's going to be labelled and he's going to be pigeonholed and everything. But I bet deep down, listening to what you're saying about being inside a locker room with your mates playing rugby, that that's how he wants to be remembered by his mates, as a damn hard-working team man, surely. Yeah, and that's very much the um, the impression I got from that interview he had last night, that he didn't really, really want to make a fuss about it. He was doing it because I felt he kind of more felt like he had to. I mean, I don't I don't think he was unhappy about it, but I, I think also that because most people in that community, uh, his community, probably already know, and that perhaps he's going for uh, a role 
in perhaps coaching or something like that, um, that it's going to come out, pardon the pun, come out eventually, uh, that he'd rather just do it on his own terms. But he, I think also one of the big things that's surrounding this, and this is sort of, it's, it's a tricky one to talk about, is that when we, when society sort of thinks about the gay or black, we think of what we stereotypically think of gay people, which is like incredibly effeminate, like drag queens and that culture, when in actual fact, I've played rugby with plenty of gay guys and they all very much are like Campbell, where they're just guys who play rugby who you wouldn't know anything else looking at them and they just so happen to be gay. Um, And that I think that us as a society... Uh, when we treat um, sexuality as, like you mentioned before, as normal, that we kind of need to snap out of the fact that not all gay people look the way we we think think they do. Um, and I think that's why the reaction to this uh, has been relatively positive. And I, and I completely understand why you you would feel like, oh, so what? Like, let's get on with it. Like, that's completely acceptable to, to feel that way. Um, because you're right. It should be a point where it shouldn't it shouldn't matter, but because of the standing that the All Blacks have in New Zealand society and that they have in you know male culture in this in our country, then it is kind of important and it's newsworthy. Like it was always going to be newsworthy, and what I'm hoping is is that next time it's it's not. It's mm. just a thing that that, that that happens. Oh, look, we've also, you know, I've, I've got to be realistic about it as well because this is my job and we are talking about it. If I say I don't care, I care enough to make it part of the show. And I suppose, Jamie, uh, as I've just said, with the Cairns Taipans players' stance last week over the rainbow singlet thing and what the Manly players and the rainbow jersey and that, you know, you know it is important. And, you know, and, and I've got to step back and actually acknowledge because when those stories erupt, my initial reaction is, God, I hope one day that this just isn't an issue. Just wear the bloody jersey, you know, even if, you know, what it, but because it is an issue, every time it reminds us, hey, that, you know, people don't think like I think. People aren't as, as, as accepting of it as you are. There are bigots out there. Jamie, there are racists out there. Jamie, there are vermin who loot burgled businesses when they're flooded. They live amongst us as well, okay? This is just what we've got to accept, don't we? That there will be those who don't like this story, regardless of what you and me say. Absolutely. And 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 that's that, that's uh, they're free to think that way uh, if they want. If they want to put their views out there and make it known, then they have to be willing to deal with the consequences of that happening, um, because it's a very hot issue. Um, you know, like uh, it doesn't take much to get people fired up about this. Uh, and I think though, but you did sort of mention something that got me got me thinking. And you know, when we talk about Campbell Johnston, if we were to talk about him. Uh, a couple of days ago, he would have been a guy who you're going, oh, that's right. He was a guy who played for the Crusaders. And if you're a real bit of a rugby nerd, you'd know that he played in that 2005 series against the Lions. And he debuted uh, uh, with some other guys that you you might not remember, like Sassini and Essie and Darren Whitcomb and uh, James Ryan. Um, but now we're going to know him as Campbell, Campbell Johnson, the first openly gay or black. And... I, I don't think that's that's a bad thing, you know, and I, and I don't think I think that when we think about Sir Brian Williams, for example, the first thing that people uh, say is not that he was a brilliant rugby player. It's that he was the first uh, one of the first Pacific Island players to play for the All Blacks and and was a real inspiration to that community. And it's why he's been recognized in, in society and, and held to the regard that he is like that's the important thing. Um, that he brought, he he brings with his name. And I think that if some good can come out of this and people look up to Cam Johnson and go, well, if he can do it, then I can I can do it and be comfortable in my own skin, then I think that can only be a good thing. Okay, final question then, and this is an awkward one, mate. Why isn't it such a big deal when it's women? So many of the black ferns we know. Portia got married the other day to Renee. Congratulations to them. It just uh, Why is it such a much bigger deal if it's a bloke that comes out as gay as opposed to a girl? Oh, well, great question. And I don't think I'm particularly qualified to answer it. But I think when you talk about women's sport, I think especially women's rugby, and and I'll I'll just use women's rugby as an example, because the whole reason that women's rugby became a thing is because it really kind of started out as as quite a feminist counterculture uh, movement in which a woman could see, would try and put themselves inside, you know, the most patriarchal space in, in New Zealand society, which is rugby. 
uh, or, or the most patri- vi- visibly patriarchal one. And and I think that because of that, and I think that because of the woman involved um, at the very roots of that game, it was essentially founded by the same people that play it now. And that you have a, a high degree of acceptance and um, and participation by uh, lesbian women in, in, the, in not only rugby, but in the Black Ferns themselves. So I think that that's probably why, because it's always been like that in rugby. But uh, yeah, also because sport is just seen as a safe space for gay women. Um, it's not something that in the past that women, uh, you know, would have participated in when they would have expected to just grow up, be pretty and get married. Uh, and that um, playing sport would be something that, you know, would be something that uh, is outside of the norms for women. So therefore being a lesbian probably, you know, tracks in that in that, in that that regard. Um, but it's a big topic, you know, it's a big topic because there's certain sport, certain women's sports where it's not accepted. It's not, it, it is it is strange, and there's certain sports where it's completely the opposite way around. So yeah, I mean, it's it's an on ongoing thing. But I think I think the most important thing about this, and I talked to Brad Weber about this last year, and he's been quite a big supporter of this yeah, has, this yeah. issue, and he's mm. used his platform to yeah, to, to, to boost this. Mm. Uh, and and we sort of came we came around to the most important thing about it, which is like, well, just don't be a dick about it. Just don't be a dick. If you're on the field and, and you see someone and you know they're gay or something, you're not going to say something bad to them. You're not going to say that in the changing rooms. Just don't be a jerk. 